Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Nahmaduhu wa nusalli ala rasulihi al kareem. Amma bad. Subhanaka la ilbalana illa ma lamtana innaka anta alimul hakim. Rabbi shahli sadri wa yassirli amri. Wahlul uqdata min lisani yafkahu qawli. Brothers and sisters, we are grateful, we are thankful for the bounties and blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in our lives. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increase for all of us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us in the company of the righteous in this world. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raise us amongst the righteous on the day of Qiyamah. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fill our lives with mercy and rahmah as all of us are in the need of the rahmah and the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So alhamdulillah, today we have reached the 22nd day uh, of the month of Ramadan. And subhanAllah, the first odd night is, is gone. And then subhanAllah, we're waiting inshallah for the second odd night tonight. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it possible for us to find Laylatul Qadr. May He truly give us the blessings and thamarat and fruits of this very beautiful month of Ramadan. May He never make us from amongst those who are deprived of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, brothers and sisters, we continue our series known as the Councils of the Pious, where we take the words, inspiration and motivation from our pious uh, and we try to introspect those words and bring it into our lives to make ourselves better individuals. Because I say this very often and to repeat and remind myself that uh, we as individuals, as good Muslims and believers, always need to become better individuals. We always need to work on our inner selves. As all of us try our best to make sure that we live the most comfortable lives, you know, maybe in our professions, in our homes we want to make sure that we have the best of the best just like that with our iman and our spirituality a person with iman would always want it to be increasing and, and getting closer towards Allah subhanahu wa so may Allah subhanahu wa make these the means of us finding the closeness of Allah subhanahu wa so let's get to today's council uh today's our 22nd day and the council for today is uh mentioned by uh, you know, subhanAllah, a man known as Ibrahim ibn Adham, rahimahumullah ta'ala anhu. Uh, you know, sometimes I talk about these individuals, but their lives are so beautiful that, you know, if I if I start talking about them, then I won't be able to share the counsel in the next few minutes. But just quickly about Ibrahim bin Adham, rahimahumullah ta'ala anhu, he's also known as Ibrahim al-Balkhi uh, from the area of Balkh. According to uh, Ibn Asakir, Ibn Asakir is a big historian in Islam who has written the history of Islam himself. Ibn Asakir mentions that uh, Ibrahim Ibn Adham rahimahullah ta'ala anhu was born uh, in Balkh and he moved towards Skufa. Um, and then Ibn Asakir also mentions that he passed away in the Byzantine island uh, where he has written a lot about his life. Imam al-Bukhari. Anhu, the great author, the muhaddith, uh, one of the greatest compilers of hadith actually talks about Ibrahim ibn Adham anhu as well, where he had benefited from the likes of Fudayl ibn Ayaz. Wallahi, these names just bring sweetness to us, uh, just thinking about their names. Ibrahim ibn Adham anhu was actually a king, uh, and he was uh, one of the most wealthiest individuals of his time. Uh, and he left everything uh, and he became a Zahid. Uh, you know, asceticism was something that he chose, uh, Zuhud, he chose over kingdom. Uh, and he was known for, you know, changing the lives of so many people that he found involved in, 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 in the pursuits of world. A famous story about Ibrahim ibn Adham was that once after Allah changed his life, he went to a, a house of, a, you know, he walked towards the kingdom uh, of a man who was known for his big kingdom. And when he was wandering around, uh, he said that the king asked, what, what are you looking for in my kingdom? He said, I'm looking for my lost camels in your roof. He said, how is that possible? You can find roofs, uh, camels on the roofs of kings. He says, then where will, you, where will you find the closest of Allah sitting in your big thrones? Meaning uh, he, that's, that was his life. That was Ibrahim ibn Adham. He would always, you know, bring that humility and humbleness to find Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But of course, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us both uh, types of prophets and anbiya as well. Uh, that with kingdom, they were the, nambi, the anbiya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as Sulaiman alayhi salam and Dawud alayhi salam. But again, let's get to the, 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 the council for today. Uh, 
Ibrahim ibn Adham Rahimahullah ta'ala anhu was asked, and if you want to know about his time frame, he was around 100 years after Hijra towards 140, around that time. Uh, so someone asked Ibrahim ibn Adham Rahimahullah ta'ala anhu that how did you attain zuhud, you know, asceticism? How did Allah give you this zuhud? And zuhud, brothers and sisters, sometimes is translated into uh, or, or sometimes made to look as if you wear worn clothing and, 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 and you just have like this dirty look and, and you just abandon. No, that's not true asceticism. Uh, true zuhud, according to the people of uh, Sufis and the true uh, scholars, refers to having the things of this world, but knowing that they are temporary. Having the things of this world and knowing that you're not going to be having this forever and your focus is akhirah. So the true zuhud is of the heart where, where you know that everything that Allah has given me is an amanat for a very temporary time, which of course is a topic to itself that we can talk inshallah sometime. So someone asked Ibrahim bin Adham Rahim Allah ta'ala anhu that how did you attain zuhud? How did you attain this asceticism that Allah given you? that your heart is towards Akhirah, with all the kingdom that Allah had given you, with all this might and this power and this fame and this spotlight and anything that everything that anyone can imagine, how did Allah give you, how did you attain this asceticism of Akhirah, meaning how did you attain the focus of the hereafter? Ibrahim bin Adam rahmatullah said with three things. There were three things that I can introspect in my life. And of course, you know, all the counsels that I share with you are with three. Uh, so he said there are three things that help me realize the reality. The first thing Ibrahim bin Adam Rahmatullah said, he said that I have buried many of my loved ones with my own hands. I have buried many people that I love with my own hands, very, very close to me. And I found grave to be one lonely place that I would have no companion therein except for my deeds. He says, that was one big wake-up call for me, that I have buried so many people in the grave with my own hands, and I have seen that the grave is one lonely place, and there will go no one with you except for your own deeds. That was my first wake-up call, that I realized that, you know what, I can't be here forever. I need to have that connection of Akhirah, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is feeling in my heart. That was number one thing that Ibrahim bin Adam rahimahullah mentioned. Then he said, I saw that the path was very long. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. He said, I saw that the path is very long, but my provision is very less. Right? As Umar bin Khattab radiallahu anhu used to say, I will say this in Urdu, our teachers used to say this. I'll translate that in, uh, in, in English afterwards. Our teachers used to say this very with so much muhabbat. They used to say Urdu when we, alhamdulillah, used to study in madrasa institution. They used to say, Sahaba kehte te, safar bada lamba hai aur tosha bahut thoda hai, right? That my safar, my travel is extremely long, but my provision and sustenance that I have on that journey is very less. And this is who? This is the Sahaba saying this. And Ibrahim bin Adam Ramtullah is quoting the Sahaba. He's saying, you know, this is the famous saying of Umar bin Khattab radiallahu And who is Umar bin Khattab? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Law kana la kana Umar. If there was a Nabi after me where Allah has closed the door of prophethood, it would have been Umar ibn Khattab. He's saying that my journey is long and my provision is less. Oh Umar, if Allah does not forgive you, then Umar bin Khattab has become halak. These are the, and halak meaning destroyed. These are some of the final words that he's sharing with his son, Abdullah ibn Umar. While his head is on the lap of his own son, he's saying, oh, my son, put my face to the ground and allow me to rub my face in the dirt. Because if Allah does not forgive Umar, then how can Umar become successful? And he used to say this very often, that my journey is very long but my provision is very less. So second thing, Ibrahim bin Adam, the first thing he mentioned was that I buried many people with my own hands in the grave and I found grave to be one lonely place. And there goes within it, no one except for me and my deeds. Number one, wake up call. Number two, I realized that the journey of Akhara is long. 
my qabr, brothers and sisters, imagine those who passed before us. Now, how long is that journey of qabr, right? We prepare for a week's trip towards Florida or towards you know, Saudi Arabia or to any other place that we are going to. For a week's travel, we make sure that we are comfortable enough. And I, as being a father for three kids and, and my family, we travel and we make sure that every little thing we keep for the comfort of the kids that they would need. SubhanAllah, brothers and sisters, imagine a journey that is such a long journey. And of course, the, the akhirah forever and ever. What is my provision and sustenance, right? How much am I investing in my akhirah, right? Alhamdulillah, we, we try our best to do what we can for our dunya. But how much am I and are you working towards investment of akhirah is something that we really need to see. So he said, the second thing I realized was that my journey is extremely long, but my provision is very less. And last but not least, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. The, the last thing he mentioned, Ibrahim bin Adham Rahmatullah, he said, and I saw that the Almighty, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most powerful, the most mighty, the Almighty will be my judge while I have no argument in my defense. Meaning Allah will be my judge and I have no argument in my defense. So this, these are the three things that I have to face Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Imagine this, brothers and sisters, even for one second, and may Allah forgive us if someone goes through court or cases and situations, how difficult it is to present yourself and to councils and this and that, subhanAllah. Imagine the Almighty being the judge. Where will be our witness? Who will be our defense? What will be our argument? in this very case, brothers and sisters. So subhanAllah, may Allah protect us. And that's why brothers and sisters, it's very important to make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for me and for all of us that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us jannah bi ghairi hisab, without any resurrection. Because anyone who is questioned will be destroyed, brothers and sisters. Because wa ma qadr Allah haqqa qadri. Because we cannot fulfill the haqq and the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as it is the haqq of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He says in the Quran himself, wa ma qadr Allah haqqa qadri. It is not possible for you to fulfill the haqq of the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the power and the might of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he says the third thing that was the, the wake-up call for me for the life of, of what I was living towards, the life of asceticism was that I realized that Almighty will be my judge and I as an individual, while I have no valid argument in my defense on the day of Qiyamah. Meaning what excuse will I give Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of Qiyamah? So brothers and sisters, let's wrap up these three very beautiful things. Again, my point is not to abandon the dunya. Islam is not about the religion where you abandon everything and you choose Rahbaniyat and you become monks. No, that's not, this is not Islam. Islam teaches us to be within the families and, and people and public and everything, livelihood and work and businesses and jobs and home, everything is okay. But we just need to focus where their, the heart is. That's, that's the biggest focus. That's the biggest feeling in Islam is where is the direction of our hearts. So again, Ibrahim bin Adham Rahim Mullah a great Sufi and scholar of his time, uh, regarding him, Ibn Asakir, the great historian, Imam al-Bukhari, and many of them have mentioned so much about his detail, born in Balkh, passed, he lived in Kufa, passed away in Byzantine Island, lived a, a life of kingdom in the beginning, and then chose asceticism over everything, Zuhud. And when he was asked that, what led you towards asceticism and Zuhud, he says three things, and I'm just repeating myself so that, inshallah, we can keep this in our mind and fresh in this beautiful day of Jum'ah. May the salawat and blessings upon the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam increase. And may Allah give us the, the barakah and the blessings of this very beautiful day of Jum'ah. He said three things. Number one, he said, I saw the grave being a very lonely place. Well, I buried many people and I saw that there was no one except for them and their deeds. And that was a wake-up call for me. Number two, I saw that my journey towards Akhirah, the safar is tawil, is very long. But my provision is very less. What am I preparing for Akhirah? And third is that Rabbul Alameen, the Almighty, will be the judge on the day of Qiyamah. And I will have no valid excuse in my argument, in my defense on the day of Qiyamah. Where this is something that woke me up to make me realize 
and indeed what is the reality of this life and what is the preparation of Akhirah. Brothers and sisters, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to truly allow us to live our lives as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can be pleased with us. May He give us the tawfiq and ability to live our life according to the very beautiful way and tariqah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Brothers and sisters, today is the day of Jum'ah. Try our best to send as much salawat and blessings on the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Today is a day of Jum'ah. Even if we are not able to go to the Jum'ah, then at least do the etiquettes of Jum'ah. The Nabi of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa would, uh, you know, take a bath on day of Jum'ah. He would wear something clean. He would put on some fragrance and some, uh, you know, oil. Uh, prepare yourself, uh, you know, show Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we desire uh, the, the sunnah and the actions of Jum'ah. Uh, and of course, recitation of Surah Al-Kahf. Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi mentioned that anyone who recites Surah Al-Kahf on the day of Jummah will be protected from the fitna of the Jal. Try our best, brothers and sisters. It's not very long. And if you cannot, cannot, cannot in, in, a, in a last way, then at least the 10 beginning ayats and the 10 last ayats of Surah Al-Kahf, you should definitely make. And last but not least, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned there's a moment that whatever the Abd of Allah, whatever the slave of Allah, whatever the servant of Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala asks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for their needs, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts their dua. So the dua is readily accepted on the day of Jummah. And I just saw in our chat, our beloved brothers from, from our host, Brother Bashir, or maybe Brother Javed, I'm not sure who it is. Allah reward them and bless them behind the scene. They just shared with us a PDF file in our uh, Zoom meeting uh, in, in Surah Al-Kahf. So you can, you can download that, keep that in your device as well. To, to recite as well. So it's also in your chat. Surah Al-Kahf, may Allah reward you for sharing that, brother. May Allah bless you, inshallah, and increase for you. And also, brothers and sisters, we have our Juma reflection, our Friday reflection, inshallah, at 1 p.m. in the same meeting room, inshallah, uh, at 1 p.m. And then, inshallah, we'll see each other uh, tonight at 9 p.m. again uh, in one of our uh, odd nights, inshallah. And again, uh, thank you so much. And again, from, from our uh, chairman of the Board of Trustees and uh, Sister Ismail is also saying Jazakallah khairan to everyone uh, for those who are tuning in and participating and being a part of this on behalf of her and the entire board and entire EC. Brothers and sisters, thank you so much for being with us the entire Ramadan and helping and supporting. May Allah make it easy for all of us and allow us to live our life as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can be pleased with us. Keep me and the entire Ummah in your dua. Inshallah, we'll see you at one and then at night again, nine again, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.